A History of the Yoruba People S. Adabanji Akindi Traditions of Kingdom Founders The welding of many pre-existing small settlements together to create the city of Ila Ife and the Kingdom of Ife marked a great leap forward in the political history of the Yoruba people. In the five or six centuries that followed the emergence of the Ife Kingdom in the heart of Yorubaland, cities like Ila Ife, each the capital of a kingdom like the Ife Kingdom, rose up in nearly all parts of Yorubaland. As had happened in the case of Ila Ife, every one of the emerging cities came into being by welding together a number of pre-existing small settlements, each of which had been a little kingdom in its own right. The basic scenario was the same in most cases. A group of Yoruba people, migrating from Ife, or later also from other places in Yoruba land, came to some Yoruba people living in an Alu, or clump of small old settlements, in the Yoruba forests, and proceeded to weld itself and them together to form a town like Ila Ife and a kingdom like Odujuas. There exist in all parts of Yoruba land large bodies of detailed traditions about the creation of the Yoruba kingdoms, almost all of which have been collected in bits and pieces in writing in recent times. Almost all these traditions link the creation of the kingdoms to Ila Ife. Nearly every kingdom states in its traditions that its founder originated from Ife, that he was a descendant of Oduduwa, and that he migrated from Ife in the time of Oduduwa or close to it. Ife palace traditions have it that Oduduwa himself, on his deathbed, initiated the kingdom founding movement by urging members of his family to go out and establish kingdoms like Ife in the rest of Yoruba land. One body of Ife palace traditions even puts a formal, ceremonial, face on the earliest migrations from Ife. According to this body of traditions, the princes gathered at the place called Ida Ijero, just outside the Ila Ife city walls, held a farewell meeting, agreed and swore to certain conventions concerning their relationships with one another and with the Ife ancestral home and dispersed to their separate destinations, each to found a kingdom of his own. According to Samuel Johnson in his The History of the Yorubas, the following were the first seven kingdoms founded from Ife by members of the Ife royal family, the Ou, that is Ou Ipole, kingdom founded by the Olau, the Keti kingdom founded by the Alaketu, the Benin kingdom founded by Oromian, the Ila kingdom founded by the Orangun, the Sabe kingdom founded by the Onizib, the Popo kingdom founded by the Olupapo and the Oyoila kingdom founded by Oranmian. Johnson obviously relied only on traditions collected by him in the western parts of Yoruba land. It is known that in other parts of Yoruba land, the following are also mentioned among the earliest kingdoms founded by princes from Ife, the Ilesa kingdom founded by Ajibagun, also known as Abokun, the Ijebuod kingdom founded by Abana, the Owo kingdom founded by Ojugbalu, and his son Amade, the Adu kingdom in Akiti founded by Iwamuro, some other Akiti kingdoms the Odondo kingdom founded by the Osemo, and others. All these, however, are, according to the traditions, only a few of the kingdoms founded from Ife, since kingdoms continued, after the first wave of migrations, to be founded from Ife for centuries. In the same era also, kingdoms founded from Ife became centers from which migrant groups went out to found other kingdoms. Moreover, some kingdoms would no doubt have been founded without any origination from Ife or any other existing kingdom by adventurous persons acting on their own strength, although benefiting from the general tradition evolving all around them. A complete count of the Yoruba kingdoms has never been done, but even a cursory count would seem to point to a number in excess of 70. And even that would not include kingdoms that failed soon after they were founded and became absorbed by their neighbors. Causes of the Migrations All this raises the question. Why did people go out on these kingdom founding adventures? What factors or incentives were at work in Yoruba society that made so many prominent persons leave their homes to go and found kingdoms and that made many ordinary folks go with them into largely unknown forests? The Ife Palace traditions quoted above present the earliest kingdom founders as only loyally responding to the express desire of their great progenitor. However, some verses of Ajuifa offer a purely economic explanation. According to those verses, the Ife kingdom, very early in its history, suffered a severe famine caused by a long drought. The famine was made the more devastating by the fact that the city was overpopulated. The rulers of the kingdom therefore sought counsel from the Ifa oracle and, through a priest named Ajir Ilajban, a resident of Ida in Anila Ife, the oracle counseled that some of the people of Ila Ife should migrate to other parts of the country. The rulers accepted the council and embarked on encouraging the Ila Ife citizens, led by their princes, to go out and found new kingdoms like the Ife Kingdom. Other Ife traditions give accounts of some migrations originating from Ife at the time of the wars between Oduduwa and Obatala that is, migrations caused by the troubles in Ife before Oduduwa became king of all Ife. 
One such was the protest migration led by Oba and Rin the migration that founded the kingdom of Igbo Igbo. Because Igbo Igbo was bent on destroying the new city of Ila Ife, it provoked against itself the patriotic and military energy of the new Ife kingdom, and perished in the outcome. Very probably, a similar protest migration at about the same time, in the same troubled circumstances, resulted in the founding of the Ketu kingdom in the far west. The hitherto popular tradition about the founding of Ketu has been that Sopasan, the founder of Ketu, was one of Odujua's grandsons. However, in recent times, Abiodun Adiran has recorded an Ife tradition which has it that Sopasan was in fact, like Obatala and Oba and Rin, a ruler of one of the old, pre Odudua, settlements in Ife. According to this tradition, Sopasan left during the wars and led his followers to the western parts of Yorubland where they ultimately, after the Ife kingdom had been created, established the kingdom of Ketu. This tradition would, therefore, make Ketu the oldest existing kingdom established in other parts of Yoruba land by persons from Ife. Migrations caused by famines appear too to have occurred at various times in later periods of Ife's history, according to many Ife traditions. Periodic droughts and famines, usually separated by decades, are known to be generally characteristic of the region to which Yoruba land belongs. It would seem that whenever such occurred in Ife's history, Ife society tended to respond with migrations, a response conditioned by the history of earlier Ife emigrations. Consequently, we must conceive of emigrations as events that happened in Ife's history from time to time, bigger at some times than at others some of them producing new kingdoms in various places in Yoruba land. Furthermore, a typically Yoruba cultural phenomenon chieftaincy contests and disputes was also a common cause of kingdom founding migrations. This occurred when a prince or descendant of a chiefly lineage, who believed that he was unfairly passed over in the selection of a king or chief, decided to go away, taking relatives and supporters with him. The first known emigration of this type occurred early in Ife's history, under the leadership of a very popular prince named Olojo Agbel who, after being passed over, unfairly in the opinion of most Ife citizens, left Ila Ife with a large following and founded Ifwara kingdom in the forest south of Ila Ife. Thereafter, Hardly any significant Yoruba kingdom avoided this type of incident in its history. In most cases, such emigrant leaders ended up in other well-established cities and accepted some high titles there. The dynamic of this development was that Yoruba towns were usually seeking to get bigger, to extend beyond their walls, that is, Yadi break out beyond the city walls. For this purpose, Yoruba rulers frequently offered sacrifices to their gods, seeking supernatural help to increase their city's populations. Therefore, an aggrieved prince who took himself and many followers away was punishing his town in a very hard way. And while the town he was leaving behind might be mourning, all towns on his way would offer him incentives to persuade him to stop and settle with them. Such events as this constitute a very common theme in Yoruba folklore. Most of such migrating princes would accept an offer and settle in some town, hence the very important fact that virtually every major town of the Yoruba has at least a few high chiefs, and quarters whose ancestors had migrated in protest from other towns. However, there are traditions of many a protest migrant leader who persisted until he came to a suitable location where he and his followers founded a kingdom of their own. Not a few Yoruba kingdoms had this type of origin. There were also a few kingdoms that seemed to have originated from deliberate sponsorship by an existing kingdom, as an extension of the power and influence of the sponsor. The powerful kingdom of Oyoila, at the peak of its greatness in the 17th and 18th centuries, sponsored the creation of a few kingdoms in the Oyo, Igbado and Igbamana countries. The old kingdom of Ketu also sponsored one or two kingdoms in the Ketu country. Most of the kingdoms over which Oyo nominees came to rule in Igbado in the 18th century were not founded from Oyo, they were old kingdoms over which Oyo came to establish influence. A kingdom that sponsored the creation of a new kingdom did so to protect its own interest in an area. For instance, Oyo sponsored the creation of Ida as an outpost against Ilase's threats, and Afa in the Imbolo country, and Igbaja in the Igbamana country, as outposts against Noop incursions. Ilase founded Osogbo as an outpost against Oyo in the Osin Valley. Some traditions, both of Edo and local Yoruba provenance, claim Benin foundation of some kingdoms in eastern and southern Yoruba land. However, a close look at the traditions of those kingdoms indicates quite strongly that Benin foundation is very unlikely. A consideration of this matter belongs to another chapter, suffice it to say here that Benin's influence seems to have entered into the lives of these kingdoms at later stages of their history. Some kingdoms were founded, according to available traditions, by people fleeing from distress in established kingdoms distress caused by military pressure from neighbors. Because Yoruba land was, on the whole, peaceful before the beginning of the 19th century, 
kingdoms with this type of origination appear to have been few. According to Ijesa traditions, the kingdom of Emisi Igboto, now Okamesi, in Akiti was founded by emigrants who went up the hills from Emisi Ila as a result of Ilase's military pressure on Emisi Ila in about the 17th century. Finally, there were obviously kingdoms that were founded by purely local persons that is, talented and capable local men who, in the era of the foundation of the kingdoms, managed to carve out kingdoms in their localities. Presumably, too, in the era in which many of the new type of kingdom were emerging here and there in the Yoruba forests, there were instances in which the existing local structure, the Alu, gradually evolved, on its own, to become a centralized kingdom. No Yoruba kingdom would acknowledge either of these kinds of origin, however, because it provides no link with a prestigious source. Yet, a close sifting of many traditions of origin would seem to indicate quite strongly that local origination was the source of at least some Yoruba kingdoms. Given the desire of every kingdom to be seen as having a great and prestigious origin such as Ife, a local personage who created a kingdom or became the ruler of a kingdom would almost certainly hurry to forge an actual or mythical link with Ife, making it possible for his descendants to claim that their ancestor originated from Ife. It is obvious from all the above, then, that the origins of Yoruba kingdoms were considerably more diverse than the Yoruba people in their traditions would like to acknowledge. Concerning this, some historians have, rightly, counseled caution in our acceptance of the traditions of the origins of Yoruba ruling dynasties, pointing out that, in particular, probably many of the traditions of origin from Ife are open to question or even doubt. Yet there is a sense in which all Yoruba kingdoms can be said to originate in Odudu and Ife. Odudu and Ife gave the Yoruba people their first kingdom, elaborated the structure of their type of kingdom, and pointed all of the Yoruba people in the direction to this higher level of political existence. This is more than enough to proclaim Oduduwa as the father of all Yoruba kings and people. Over many centuries before the 19th, the belief in Ife and Oduduwa as place of origin and progenitor of Yoruba kings ruled the lives of virtually all Yoruba people, and descent from Ife was the proof of legitimacy for Yoruba kings. No decline in the fortunes of the Ife kingdom itself seems to have been enough to shake this belief. For instance, at the time that Samuel Johnson made our first written collection of the traditions in the last decades of the 19th century, there was no incentive for any Yoruba kingdom to claim an Ife origin for its ruling dynasty. Ife was in ruins, for the second time in about three decades, its badly shrunken population was camped in a small farm village called Isoya, the site of the ancient city itself was covered by thick bush, and there was not even a king over Ife, the man selected as Uni remained uncrowned in exile some forty miles to the south, in the village of Okigbo in the Ondo country. In spite of this situation, the strongest and proudest states of the Yoruba people of the time unhesitatingly, and with all gravity, recounted to Johnson and other writers the traditions of the coming of Yoruba dynasties from Ife. Obviously, the most that we can say about this subject is that our knowledge of this important development in Yoruba history the processes of the emergence of the Yoruba kingdoms and the growth of the powerful belief in Ife and Oduduwa as the source and springhead of Yoruba kings is still limited. Ways and Means of the Kingdom Founders the kingdom founding migrant groups and the dwellers in the old small settlements to whom they came, belonged to the same culture and spoke the same language, albeit different dialects of that language. Yoruba traditions about the founding of their kingdoms do not tell of some alien invaders, but of a movement generated from within the Yoruba culture and people. Robert Smith writes as follows. Linguistic evidence seems to show that by the time they began to form the states, the Yoruba had occupied more or less their present habitat for several hundreds or even thousands of years. The traditions relate that as the emigrants from Ife spread over the land, they almost everywhere encountered earlier settlers, who were often hostile, not unreasonably, since they had prior claim to the land, but who apparently neither were unfamiliar nor spoke an unknown tongue. The Oduduwa cycle describes not a conquest from outside but a process of state formation from within a people in which the leaders belonged to a dominant but probably not alien lineage. Fighting was quite common in the process of establishing the new kingdoms. Usually, the emigrant groups arrived, settled peacefully close to the old settlements in Anilua and proceeded to establish interactions with them. In a few cases, such peaceful methods worked, and the immigrants slowly achieved the end of unifying themselves with all the settlements, with the migrant leader as king. But in most cases, their effort provoked reaction and resistance and war, sometimes war that went on over a long time. The end result was always a new community, the beginning of an Ila Ife type of city. At its beginning, the new community always comprised many clearly defined groups. First, there was each of the old settlements led by its own ruler. The immigrant group too consisted of segments. The overall immigrant leader had his own personal following, 
his family and relatives and other persons directly attached to him. Then there were prominent men who had agreed to come with him, each bringing a group comprising his own personal following, family, relatives and persons directly attached to them. Each such subordinate leader and his group constituted a clear segment of the total immigrant group altogether led by the creator and overall leader of the immigrant group. Each of the new cities was therefore a plurality in the fullest sense, a plurality that accepted the overall immigrant leader as king and then proceeded to build around him an expanding body of rituals, ceremonies, institutions and myths. As had happened in Ila Ife under Oduodua, the age-old outlines of monarchy as they had grown over hundreds of years in the old settlements were taken and applied to the larger community that came into existence. If the new king was indeed a prince from Ife, building him up as a branch of the Oduodua dynasty was easy. If he were someone other than an Ife prince, the task of building him up as a chip of the Oduduwa dynasty was less easy, but it would still be accomplished. For many centuries after the creation of the Ife kingdom, a king was, by definition, for all Yoruba people, a prince from Ife. From about the 17th century, after first Benin and then Oyo became dominant in the Yoruba Edo region, some new, and even old, Communities could feel comfortable with claims of Benin or Oyo royal origin for their kings but even that with a very clear understanding that the Benin and Oyo dynasties themselves were branches of the Ife dynasty. One other fact that emerges quite clearly from the traditions is that whenever the arriving immigrant groups in the old settlements fought, the immigrant groups almost invariably emerged victorious. Why was this so? Some historians have tended to assume the answer to be that the immigrants had iron weapons while the people of the old settlements did not. A close look at the traditions, however, would seem emphatically to contradict that assumption. There does not appear to have been any technological superiority of one group over the other. The immigrant groups and the old settlements belonged to a general Yoruba civilization in which the production and use of iron was long established. It is not impossible, of course, that some slightly more potent iron weapons were known to the immigrant groups, but there is no clear evidence, or even hint, about that in the traditions. Numbers seem to have been a factor the immigrant groups are usually represented as coming in large numbers. What this seems to mean is that they arrived with larger numbers of persons than each of the old settlements had. Such numbers were effective, it would seem, because the old settlements had no tradition of acting together and therefore could not collaborate against the immigrants. In one place where the old settlements managed to unite a little, that is, in Owo, they succeeded so much as to dislodge the immigrant group from its first chosen location and, thereafter, kept resisting and fighting for generations. The most important reason for the victory of the immigrant groups, however, would seem to be the difference in worldviews between them and the people of the old settlements. Each of the old settlements was merely resisting threats to its old way of life its small, exclusive, inward-looking existence. Each immigrant group, on the other hand, was animated by ambitions and dreams inspired by the city of Ila Ife, the kingdom of Ife and the glory of the kings and chiefs of Ife in short, by visions of the grand new world in which their own city would shine and they themselves and their descendants would reign as kings and chiefs like Oduduwa and his chiefs. They had left home on the quest for such goals, no matter where they came from, and even when they were faced with the toughest resistance, acceptance of failure was not an option for them. In many places, if the fighting went through twists and turns, they kept trying to find ways for the victory of their ideas and their mission. The traditions of many kingdoms show that the new polity emerged only after many compromises and truces. In short, a new idea of society was on the move in Yoruba land, and it would adopt any means to get to victory. As far as is known in the traditions, in no place was its goal ultimately and decisively thwarted. The migrations for the founding of the kingdoms obviously occasioned considerable movements of people across the face of Yoruba land. Some of the migrant groups probably consisted of no more than a few hundred people. But some appear to have involved quite large numbers. The impression one gets from the accounts of the earliest emigrations led by princes from Ife is that they generated much excitement and attracted many people, and that people joined them from settlements along their paths. Oranmian's followership is spoken of as consisting of a very large army of mostly young people. Oranmian is also said to have never failed to attract some followers in any settlement that he passed through. And when the prince Olojoagbel left Ife, on the migration that produced the Ifwara kingship, so many relatives, friends and sympathizers are said to have gone with him that he was spoken of for a long time afterwards as the prince who almost emptied some quarters of Ila Ife. His following was so large because his was a protest migration against a broadly unpopular rejection of his candidature by the Ila Ife kingmakers. In fact, when it was time again to select another king in Ila Ife, the Ila Ife chiefs invited Olojo Agbel to return from Ifwara and rule in Ila Ife, so that he might bring some of the people back. Some of the Ifwara people did then return to Ila Ife, 
but Olo Joag Bell himself seems to have died before ascending the Ife throne. The migrations continued for centuries, and transformed the political and demographic structure of Yoruba land. Their most visible physical heritage is the many cities of the Yoruba people, the cities of the kings. And their political heritage is the Yoruba kingdoms. From all we know about these developments and their times, one important conclusion seems unavoidable namely, that the era of the kingdom founding migrations was a special era in Yoruba history. It was a long period in which the spirit of adventure was strong among the Yoruba people, a period in which they were ready to step out beyond the common run of their lives and venture into the largely unknown in order to accomplish the unique, the new and the glorious. The revolution that produced the city of Ila Ife and the kingdom of Ife appears to have roused something noble, adventurous and big in the character of the Yoruba people.